It's time for the mic drop on each show by going deep on one topic affecting our community in hopes we can all learn a little more. In the wake of George Floyd's murder and the summer of social advocacy it sparked, the words inclusion, equality, and equity were bandied about quite a bit. Corporations and school boards committed themselves to the concept of each, as did the sporting world and federal and state legislators. Boards were convened, offices were opened, directors and advisors were appointed. It was a very hopeful time. But that was over two years ago. And since then, we, well, I've seen very little real forward movement on these commitments. In some instances, I've seen those who are at best paying lip service to these ideals while maintaining a status quo neutrality. And in others, I've seen backwards movement. I'll come back to this point later. There are those some corporations, organizations, and state legislators who had already been doing the work and have earnestly kept at or increased their efforts. In fact, I happen to be employed by one. And I happen to live in a city that has shown a commitment to it. Yesterday, Mayor Muriel Bowser and Amber Hewitt, the director of the Mayor's Office of Racial Equity, released the district's first ever racial equity action plan, which seeks to map out steps DC government will take to reduce inequities and improve life for all Washingtonians. Hear that? All Washingtonians. And they want your insights and feedback, which you can submit online through January 2nd. Mayor Bowser was very clear about the reasoning behind the plan, saying, it is our charge and our responsibility to put in place policies that are intentional about ending structural racism and reversing the legacies of policies that intentionally locked black and brown Washingtonians out of opportunity and the ability to build wealth. And that is what is often forgotten. It was intentional policies that drove the inequities we see today in areas like education, economic empowerment, housing, and healthcare, just to name a few. And for the record, there's also a difference between equality, defined as the quality or state of being equal, and equity, defined as the quality of being fair and impartial. Hopefully this program will help to shrink the gaps within our community so that all residents can live fair and impartial lives. That seems like a goal everybody should be able to get behind, right? Wrong, wrong, at least not in the Commonwealth of Virginia. For a time, the Commonwealth, under the direction of Governor Ralph Northam, had a robust commitment to fighting racial inequities, addressing them through policies aimed at state hiring practices, education, and health care. But then Glenn Youngkin entered office and declared war on the concepts, rescinding policies and programs in Virginia's Department of Education, addressing diversity, inclusion, and equity for being divisive. Just think about that bizarro world logic. Programs working to end divisions are called divisive. In fact, Governor Youngkin has abandoned the word equity, as have other state legislators. Equity is a dirty word for those with a zero-sum mentality, the ones who think that the advancement of for others means losses for themselves. But for myself and the like-minded, it simply means a level playing field. That is the goal, and it's a worthy one. Which is why I love my mayor, and I salute Mayor Bowser, Amber Hewitt, and everybody at the ORE for the good works that they're trying to do.